everybody. Welcome to the Back to the Latch Mama podcast. <laughs> Melissa here. It is a- another beautiful. I feel like we always podcast on these beautiful days recently. Um, it's a beautiful day here in Richmond, Virginia. We're going to do a little podcast today celebrating a little bit of Black History Month, talking a little bit about one of the things that I love to talk about the most on the podcast. Um, we're going to talk about women of color and breastfeeding and bringing some more attention um, to um, the fact that there's limited support. You're listening to Latch Mama Podcast. I'm your host, Melissa Wirt, busy mom of six and owner of latchmama.com. Join us each week as we talk about pregnancy, breastfeeding, postpartum, and all things motherhood. Hi, Ebony. How are you? Hi, I'm doing great. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Um, do you want to tell people a little bit about yourself? I know there's a lot to tell. Um, <laughs> let's hit the highlights. Tell everybody kind of who you are, what you do, what brings you joy. Okay. Um, well, I'm Ebony Allen. Um, I am... Oh, should I say my age? I don't know. I say all the time. I'll go first. I'm 40. <laughs> so I assume you're not that much yet. So <laughs> no, I'm not that much. I'm close though. I'm 37. I'm a native here of Richmond, Virginia, originally born in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I am here as a, well, I'm a moderator with Breastfeed Real Talk, which is a program under Nurture RVA. I am also a doula with Birth and Color RVA. Um, and I'm just here to essentially talk about breastfeeding, absolutely everything breastfeeding, people of color breastfeeding, yep. um, our desire to support people of color in their breastfeeding journey. Um, and I'm a mother yeah. of five now. Um, I'm currently pregnant. I have four little ones at home. She's a she's a transit driving mom, which I always get really excited about yes, when I see I it. When I see a transit in our parking lot, I feel like I'm a cool kid <laughs> instead of a, a, a bus driver. Lindy, yeah, Lindy, Lindy and I always drive up in our transits. But when I come into the parking lot and there's another one, I feel like this immense connection to another big family our mom. So community, yes. yes. Yeah, um, as a homeschooling mom, yeah. someone said like, you know, like you do it all. You're the the principal, you're the nurse, yep. you're the cafeteria lady, you're the bus driver. And I'm Absolutely. like, and I literally have a bus. So yes, that fits all categories. Totally, <laughs> totally. I love the fact that like, not only are you a homeschooling mom of a big family, um, you also find time to help in the community. And I think that it's one of the reasons why we wanted to kind of bring you in and start this conversation and like I said before, it's a conversation I want to have every week because I don't think most people, because we all kind of go through our life and people I think are inherently a little bit selfish, but I think sometimes, especially white women, women mm -hmm. of privilege, don't sometimes really take a step back to realize how much like there's not support in breastfeeding in general. Like mm -hmm. you walk down the street, I think everybody can agree on that. Mm -hmm. But then when you start to dial it down and you really look at women of color and what, what support there is out there, it's so very limited. And the people like you who are out in the community trying to change that, I think I want to give a voice to it 10 times over um, because I think it's so incredibly important the work that you all are doing. We were just looking at statistics prior to starting the podcast and the initiation rates between women of color versus white women when it comes to breastfeeding mm -hmm. are absolutely completely different. So you're looking at close to 90% of white women initiate breastfeeding within the hospitals. Um, yes. And you're looking at closer to 68 to 69% of women of color. We were talking about some of the reasons why um, when we first started sitting down, do you kind of want to talk a little bit about kind of the experience maybe that some of us don't really realize happens or some of yes, the experiences definitely. that um, <clears throat> I think it starts well, one generationally, mm -hmm. you know, are we seeing our parents or close family, relatives, friends, even um, breastfeeding? No. Um, and even once we get pregnant, um, now we're finding where it's like if you find out that a, a person of color is pregnant, one of the first questions should be, 
you know, are you considering breastfeeding? Because essentially the more you know, Mm -hmm. the better your journey can be going forward. And that's one of the things that's like really overlooked is it's more so like, you know, what items do I need to get for the babies or do I need to stock up on diapers or wipes? And yes, all of those things are important. But when you look at trying to provide nutrition for your child, especially when you look at how, um, Breastfeeding helps with so many things, Absolutely. immunity, building the child's immune system. Um, and technically, financially, it's it's the way to go, especially Absolutely. for people yeah. of color. I mean, formula is expensive. Absolutely. And then now with like the formula shortage for why yeah. I'm not even 100 percent sure, but <laughs> it's just so many things that are. Yeah. Overlooked from the get go. Um, Just like just from that education standpoint, like it cuts down on obesity, asthma. I mean, there are so many benefits to it that are hard sometimes for, you know, white women to understand. But if you're not even looking at a woman of color and saying, are you going to breastfeed? I don't even feel like that question is asked. It's not asked at all. Yes. Which is totally overlooked. Even hundred percent. And there's so many people now, um, now that I'm in this field of, you know, being a doula and providing Mm -hmm. lactation support, I can see more behind the scenes of like where we're getting missed. Um, as a, as a lactation educator, I've sat in on classes Mm -hmm. just for additional education for myself, but also to see what, um, mothers to be might be receiving and it's like a lot of the classes are predominantly white yeah not many people of color and it's like so where where is the gap absolutely are the people of color receiving the same information like okay you're pregnant you Mm -hmm. interested in breastfeeding attend these classes they're free absolutely but it's just totally being missed and there's so many people that is like you know i didn't even know about classes like they might find out in the hospital after you have a baby but who wants to sit in the classroom absolutely in the ho- that's when i was offered my first class in the hospital wow after having my child so when you went in with your we were talking a little bit about this earlier when you had your first child did you know you wanted to breastfeed i had the the all, my number one reason for breastfeeding mm-hmm. was one based on my relationship with my mom, which was not fully there. I was actually um, legally raised by my oldest sister from the age of 15. Okay. My biggest fear was that I wouldn't bond with my child. So I'm like, I have to breastfeed because the the number one thing outside, not even nutritional value, it was like breastfeeding is a way to bond. Wow. So I didn't even know of all the benefits of breastfeeding. Yeah. All I knew was, breastfeed my baby and most likely I won't grow up to hate her. That's the honest to God's truth. Wow. I was scared of having like that is postpartum. So powerful. I was scared of being detached from her. Yeah. And so I'm like, if I breastfeed her, we have a chance. Wow. And that was, that's, that's my honest to God. Number one reason why I breastfed. So did you know it was going to be hard? I didn't know. I didn't know what to expect at all. Okay. I, I knew they said, you know, put the baby on, make sure she has, um, you know, make sure she's properly latched. Yep. And that was really it. Everything else I figured out along the way. <laughs> and here, and here's some formula to take home with you just in case. Just it in case. Work. Yes. I had, yep. my, I had my formula coupons. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I received them monthly in the mail. I received the go home packets maybe a few and I even bought formula not knowing like I don't know how this journey will go we don't I mean we don't know for sure but do you I mean the amount of information that we can gather as a company in terms of marketing on social media is very significant I mean Facebook has has recently changed it a little bit locked it down Apple's locked it down as well but I wonder if anybody were to dig into you know the marketing of Similac or some of the formula Mm -hmm. formula companies whether they really do dial down and look at demographic information like that it would be very interesting i I would like to think that they definitely do one of the things that um we actually touched based on Mm -hmm. and the class that i got my lactation certification Mm -hmm. through was specifically how um formula is targeted as far as marketing yep and how it's targeted to certain demographics um so there's there's definitely, you yeah. know, like that underlying stigma there where it's like, no, like we need mm-hmm. 
I mean, you know, like how are they making all their money? They Absolutely. they have to market like everything else. And it's understandable. There are definitely cases where formula may be needed. And uh, yeah, you formula know, it's not bad, but formula yeah, is, bad. is bad when an industry that is based on money mm-hmm. and is very very well funded is lo- there's lobbyists there's formula lobbyists mm-hmm. that work in washington then goes and finds what demographic group is least supported yes, in breastfeeding that we let's can find them and let's target the crap out of them mm-hmm. and let's tell them hey you know what it's okay that it's hard it's okay that you've never seen anybody in your life do this this is it's, it's okay that you can't find representation of your own color yes. out there offering you support yes here's some formula it's okay mm-hmm. everybody else is doing it why don't you yes and it completely hijacks that entire relationship yes and it's so frustrating and it's so angering mm-hmm. like just to sit here and just know that like there there's such a lack of funding and you're going against I mean huge huge corporations and we're trying to educate women that there is another option but you have this big goliath of this company trying to get in there at it and it's yes. just it's it's so terribly hard yes and and I think another thing, especially in the black community, constantly f- kind of like feeling targeted, mm-hmm. we sometimes set ourselves up um, to like fall into a trap. Sometimes I feel like, and that's one of the things with formula where it's like, you know, we feel like we work hard at, at so much. So if, why do I, why should I have to force myself to nurse and to do these things because again we have the the mindset that it's hard like it's not natural and granted it is hard it can be challenging Mm -hmm. but so is everyday life so is raising a child Mm -hmm. you know and there's so many things that we just kind of give up on to take the easy route and i think that's why formula let's let's be honest like that's that's a for i mean definitely a white woman here but i would like to say that as a black woman your life is harder than my life as a white woman Mm -hmm. i mean hands down Mm -hmm. and i think that you're right i mean one harder thing because breastfeeding especially establishing a relationship in the beginning is definitely harder probably Mm -hmm. than feeding a baby formula Mm -hmm. um so why why would you not you know back away a little bit and say okay formula's here like it it makes perfect sense in my mind yeah and then you know, for those of you, I mean, I, I assume most people understand how a breastfeeding relationship works. But if you take that baby off the breast, you start giving them formula, you stop producing, you know, and then the whole system starts to break. You get engorged. You mm-hmm. could get mastitis. Like, and then you just start saying it, it starts becoming harder than it actually than it needs actually to be needs to be. If exactly. you just start that relationship off the bat exactly. and you're committed to it. Yes. If, if, if so many people had the, the proper education and support. Mm-hmm starting off because even um with the breastfeeding real talk program the people that we have helped a lot of them have called in a month you know their child's a month old Mm -hmm. and essentially they were told since you're struggling now put the baby on formula until we can get your supply up Mm -hmm. but there's no way to properly build your supply if you're relying on formula, it just, Absolutely. it can't happen. It's already hard enough to stick to a pumping or a nursing schedule, feeding a child every two to three hours. But when you're supplementing with formula, you're not, you know, that's like a break for you. Absolutely. And then it's so much harder to come back and then try, You well, one, you really can't feed them. So your only option is to pump because mm-hmm. they've just eaten. Yep. Um, but it's like the constant battle. And that's like the number one, that's the top thing that we get when trying to help, it's like, okay, well, the doctor told me to just supplement, Mm -hmm. you know, until my milk comes in. It's like, okay, well, how many times did you pump today? And it was like, well, I only got to pump about three times. Yeah. Like when you're establishing your supply three times. But if there's not that educational piece, like if they're waiting to get to you to get Mm -hmm. to that educational piece, we've already like, missed a few yeah. days we've missed that skin to skin we've mm-hmm. missed that that oxytocin we've 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 missed that immediate latch we've probably a little bit ent- entered into the little bit of the nipple confusion world mm-hmm. although i feel like that's kind of bs sometimes because yeah. i think you can get a baby back on the breast mm-hmm. but you've you've sidetracked and yes. you've given that mom 
the <laughs> the probably insight of hey you know what formula is not formula is okay and formula is okay mm-hmm. but if it's truly something that that mother wants to do that they we desired. need to figure out how to set them up for success yes which means that there needs to be representation within the lactation community mm-hmm. and i think it is wonderful what nurture is trying to do um by educating women like you and putting you out there and saying hey i'm here but how do we get to those women sooner in the process sooner in the process yes and that's definitely one of the things that we've um discovered even in starting our program is like okay we need the moms to call in the moms that are having nursing issues and it's again like i said the number one reason is like we need to get to these mamas sooner mm-hmm. like we need while they're pregnant so Absolutely. we can start building their education mm-hmm. then giving them tools to success that they need Absolutely. A- ahead of time. Because if you look at like what happens to those statistics that I quoted earlier, they drop significantly within mm-hmm. those first three months yep. compared and, to and even white women. more once yeah. you hit six months. Absolutely. And I mean, you have barriers that come into place. I'm sure you have the fact that it's not quite as supported or seen within their actual communities. Mm-hmm. Um, but speaking of getting to the women first, so you're also now a doula, which makes yes. complete sense because um, if you can get to women prior and especially during their pregnancies mm-hmm. and then you can help them have an empowering pregnancy that just empowers the breastfeeding journey, yes, which is fantastic. Yes. Um, so I think putting all the pieces together, um, but do you have any advice um especially women of color of how to start initiating those conversations, especially with healthcare providers in the beginning. Um, so maybe there aren't an, as many obstacles. Definitely. The number one thing is hire a doula, yep. especially people of color, mm-hmm. hire a doula. It's um, we're definitely getting out there more. The words getting out there more that, you know, we're here, we're available. Um, but there's still kind of this, you know, thing around where it's like, oh, you know, I have my family, I have badulas. They support and they also advocate. Absolutely. They help educate. Um, and they help think of the things that you might not think of, especially mm-hmm. as a new mom or even as an experienced mom dealing with children running around. You know, you, you just don't think about certain things. Um, so definitely hire a doula. Because there, I mean, there is, I mean... In most, not in some cases, there is a a racial bias in the healthcare mm-hmm. industry, especially when it comes to women of color yes. having babies. Yes, I mean, I don't, I don't think that I need statistics to back that up. I mean, I think it's been very definitely known, very, been very well studied at <laughs> yes. this point. Um, and I feel like. I, I feel like it's terrible to say, but I feel like every woman of color needs to go into a birthing situation with an advocate, mm-hmm. with somebody who has a voice for her. Yes. Um, I mean, so many of the stories that actually have made the press of just women just not getting the same level of attention, lying in a bed, almost bleeding out, running mm-hmm. into situations that absolutely in the United States of America should not happen. They shouldn't happen anywhere, yes. but they absolutely should not happen in the United States yes. of America. So really, truly until we can fix the system, getting doulas with birthing women yes yes is, 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 is essential is is needed absolutely a hundred percent um and and seeking that e- education is another thing is so many things i feel like as people of color um we can we we just limit ourselves with trying to find out as much as we can you know asking those questions seeking further education whether um, you're looking for free resources because there's a lot out there. Um, but even if you're able to pay for additional resources, just. Why why is that? Why do you think there is that. Not that that lack of maybe it's not I don't think it's lack of a desire to educate. Like, yeah, what, I don't think it's what, I don't th- I'm not really uh, to be 100 yeah, percent honest. Yeah, I'm not really sure what it is. And again, I'm kind of speaking from personal Absolutely. experience. I think from growing up how I did um, with having the experiences that I had, I had a lot of hands-on experience being the youngest sibling, um, being with my older siblings when they had children, getting that hands-on. There was a lot of things like for me, you couldn't tell me that I didn't know how to take care of a child. 
Yeah. At, at, no I've matter how many, I was two. No matter like, what society told you, you knew. I, I know how to take care of a child. And people will still come to me like I could be mommy life coach one on one. Yeah. Like it's, I it's love just that. amazing. And but I didn't know to seek further education. Yep. I didn't know, you know, that my breastfeeding journey could have been so much better if I had community and support. Like I feel like I, I feel like I was able to make my journey a great thing. Yep. I made it happen. Like I told you before, I felt like I was like a superstar in yeah. my community because not a lot of people breastfed and I yeah. breastfed proudly. I don't care where we are. If my child is hungry, I'm nursing. Like yeah. No, she doesn't want to be covered up. I'll try to cover myself up as much as possible. Yeah, but absolutely, you know, we're yeah. feeding the same way. I'm not going to put a towel over your head. So yeah. I'm not going to put a towel over her head. Like, but how many people do you know within your community that feel the same way about breastfeeding? Th- I know there's a lot that appreciate it. Yeah. But are there a lot that would actually go through it and stick to it? Like to do what they, it's, 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 there's a lot of people in my direct community, even family that I've, you know, co- like, breastfeed Mm -hmm. i'm telling you like you can do it and started off great actually like Mm -hmm. high producers and everything and it's just like uh, i can i could just get formula yeah and i'm like but why like you have the means and you're not even like not even struggling moms you know like it's one thing when you're struggling we're doing everything we can we can't get your supply up we can't you know like like good it but they just no they're like I can just do formula or I wasn't able to pump. It just, you know, it was a lot, a whole lot of stuff. N- and now six months later, they're like, why'd you let me quit? And I'm like, but I'm not <laughs> living in your bedroom. Like I yeah. can't make you, absolutely. you know, like when I'm with you, I can encourage you. I can yeah. call you. I can encourage you, but, but I can't make you hit every pumping session. Yeah. And it's a lot easier to probably quit when there's not a whole lot of representation within mm-hmm. your community, mm-hmm. which I think is it, is so different because it's very easy for a a non-woman of color to quit. Mm -hmm. But it's even easier when nobody around you is breastfeeding their children either, which I think is one of those things that we need to start trying to figure out how we help that process. Because if it's not going to get off the ground at the beginning, if the woman's going to show up at her care provider's office and is never going to be asked if she's going to be breastfeeding just because of the color of her skin, we need, we need to start making those changes because Mm -hmm. we all know like whether you're breastfeeding because you want a better bond with your baby or not, like breastfeeding is going to give that child antibodies. It's going to give them most likely a better start in life yes then you know formula right out of the gate well mm-hmm. so in a perfect world i'm going to throw this question out there with you <laughs> okay perfect world you had all the money in the world to create something how how do we start to fix kind of the maternal health care system for people of color like how like where where do we go we're a doula for every mom like where where, where do we where do doula, we go doula for every mom I feel like, I feel like simple, you know, you know how they say even like in school Mm -hmm. and especially now they'll say that, especially with more people like homeschooling and then with um, people not necessarily having to go to college because you can get a trade Uh and it's like, you know, like why waste your time and your money? We need to be teaching actual basic life functions in school. Mm Mm-hmm. Instead of kind of like, you know, like they teach about the birds and the bees at some point in school, at least about, you know, your anatomy yep. and things like that. But it's like we brush over some like my children. Just the fact that I'm I'm able to like they're amazed that I produce milk mm-hmm. that fed them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've had teenagers work in our office that <laughs> literally thought because we talk about everything at Latch Mama, mm-hmm. but that literally thought they could get pregnant 30 days of the month mm-hmm. because that is literally what they're taught because they had they're taught. no idea how their body worked. Mm-hmm. A- a- absolutely no idea. And it's like, these are things that we should know to be in tune with our bodies to mm-hmm. know how they work. We don't, we, we literally go our whole lives mm-hmm. not knowing until something happens. Absolutely. Like, oh, this is how it's supposed to function. 
Mm-hmm. This is how it's supposed to feel. Even, you know, in, in my household, we talk about, we talk about everything because we're homeschooled. Yeah. You know, absolutely. so it's yeah. like as, too. <laughs> as the oldest one, like my 10 year old has started my cycle, has started her cycle. Yeah. Like literally as soon as she turned 10, which was like mind blowing, but okay, here we are. So as a family, we discuss this because we're so close knit that it's like, you don't get any privacy. Yeah. So the other ones need to know (laughs) what's going on when you request these private moments, when you have these times and they also need to respect the difference, the change, like as you get older, your body will go through changes. And I mean, most children know that, but they don't know, you know, the, the detail and the actual importance of it to now pay attention to your body. Cause even as young children, you're the only one that can advocate for what goes on inside of you. Mm -hmm. I can see if you have a rash on your arm. Yep. I can see, you know, I can tell when you have a temperature, but if there's something going on that's different than normal, absolutely. You have to learn to learn how you feel and learn how to speak about how you feel. And and yeah. essentially, I feel like we're missing all of that um, if you don't have if you're not like super intuitive or have these like open conversations with your children. And a lot a lot of people don't. And, and yeah. especially in the black household, because it's kind of like what I say goes and we don't there's not like an, a lot of emotional talk. And I think I'm the most emotional out of my six siblings because they walk around like soldiers as far as I'm concerned and then I'm they're like you're always crying and I'm like but y'all didn't feel that like <laughs> that was just me okay it's the baby of the family yeah, right it's there the, it's it means, the baby it means of they the did family. a really good job raising you yeah you know? and that's what they always said it was like you're gonna rock that baby thing I was like well technically I will be the baby no matter how old I get y'all is still way older than me I love it. so I'm gonna always be the baby but it's it's so many t- I was just thinking about this the other day like oh I just wish I could be more oh I mean I like being the tender emotional one sometimes but sometimes it's like I don't want to cry I just want to like stand firm and and be more like y'all but it comes and goes but yeah I, I, I would definitely want so it's like an education piece it's an education piece. but it's almost like that extra little bit of being realizing that you're allowed to have the like the the, the education is there you know that it's it's it it's it shouldn't feel like a privilege it should feel like an expected thing mm-hmm. you know like like you said like you know having the having the desire to have the education because you you want it mm-hmm. not because like it shouldn't be something you deserve it's there it's you there. know what i'm saying and it's that's the piece i feel like is that 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 it's there for the taking we just have to somehow get through all this generational stuff where you don't feel like you deserve it. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. And I, I, and I think having it everywhere and having more people like you who are out there putting it online and saying, you know, Hey, I'm here to help and yes. finding the money to train and support and be able to have people, you know, make a living off of supporting each other, mm-hmm. which happens within the white community all the time, all the time, all the time, mm-hmm. um, to the point where you can k- kind of hopefully change that mindset into a, I deserve this education. Yes. And yes. I, and, and, and I deserve to take the time for myself and my family to figure out what's best for us. And that, that's another thing. Um, like what you just said that I, I personally also kind of struggled with because I also am a, daycare provider I feel like I'm all all about family and all about community so from the time I have a I have another doula client that I had that I worked with from the time that she was pregnant through her birth helping her with her breastfeeding process and now I watch her son once a week while she works so it's just like yeah I'm here I'm everything family yeah supporting however I can but even in that aspect for me it's it's like I want to do it so bad for free yeah because that's just how much I love doing it yeah I I would be a doula for free if I didn't need income you know what I mean like so it's it's for me it's that battle between like you said anybody else can do it and they can be great at it yep and they're still going to charge you what they charge you absolutely you know I mean like without even batting the eye without even blinking but me I have like okay I have somebody who needs services and now I have to charge them something like yeah. for what they deserve. Absolutely. And it's what you deserve too. And it's what I deserve too. And that's what I have to like, for me, another battle that I have to just go over with like 
you know, I've mm-hmm. acquired a skill. Absolutely. You've I, trained. I work at my skill. Yep. I educate myself. You're damn good at your skill. I, I am great at my skill. Absolutely. Yes. Um, and you, and you so deserve, I definitely have yeah. to remind myself that on a daily basis with, with all that I do. Yeah. That you absolutely deserve to be rewarded for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that we just need to continue the conversation and continue getting, you know, the word out there that we, we need to support the work that you all are doing. And it may take us from this side, you know, kind of supporting and funding the availability of representation within the black community, which I think is, is so incredibly important because the more you see it, the more you believe that you deserve it too. Yes. And I think that that's that's such an important aspect of it. Thanks for coming. This has no been awesome. Problem. Will it you come back? Been. I will. Uh, I I love you. I think you're fantastic. <laughs> oh, I think you, you are a rock star, and I'm so happy we have you in the community. Um, although I think that you could give your services throughout the entire country and be amazing. But Thank you. I'm so happy Nurture has you. I'm so happy we have you within Richmond, and I just want to keep spreading the love. Yes. So um, hopefully we can continue supporting you guys as much as we can and and get that representation out there. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.